Okay, hello YouTube. I'm going to show you this game that I played recently online that I thought was kind of interesting That because the computer kind of gets the assessment wrong for this game, which I thought was very interesting. The game starts out, it starts out as a modern, and uh, then it turns into a perk defense. It turns into an Austrian attack, it turns into a perk, and then my opponent plays uh, Castle's King side and then follows with c5. Now this is kind of a line that doesn't have a great reputation, although you can see that like a, top, a couple of top players have played it. Uh, but the percentages on the master database are pretty low, and the computer assessment is pretty high. Uh, the, the reason that this doesn't have a great reputation is it kind of gives up the center of the board. Normally, the idea behind striking back with c5 uh, revolves around after dc5 being able to play this move uh, queen a5. Uh, but in this case, when white has already gotten in this move bishop d3, it's just uh, queen a5 just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So you end up just having to recapture with dc5 and then e5. Uh, normally, if you want to play c5, it's better to play it sort of a move sooner. Like, instead of castle's king site here, uh, c c5 has a, a slightly better uh, sort of reputation, although this leads to its own um, interesting uh, theoretical uh, sort of uh, tabia. You know, uh, bishop b5 is an option, and th there's a couple other moves that are possible there. But anyway, so castle's king site, bishop d3, c5, dc, dc, e5, this is just supposed to be advantage white, this is very well known. So then knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, queen e2, still very well known stuff. Uh, knight c6, bishop e4, this is all still supposed to be a uh, relatively best play from white. Uh, queen d7, and then uh, I play bishop e3 hitting the c5 pawn, he needs to defend it, and then I begin my attack with pawn to h4. So this is already sort of, you can see the computer assessment is climbing. Uh, this is essentially a winning attack, and uh, this is all part of my uh, home preparation. I've looked at this on the computer before, so I kind of know that this is supposed to be good, and I kind of understand the ideas. And I've actually had a, a few games in this line, even in live tournaments years ago, uh, I played this and uh, with success with white and managed to you know score early checkmate victories with white. Uh, using this early attack of h4, h5. So bishop d7, h5, just continuing with the attack, and so far the computer, it likes all of this. Uh, queen c7, and then hg, and then hg, and then I play knight g5, and this is all part of the, you know, the attacking concept. Knight d4, so I exchange, and now here the computer says I made a mistake. It says bishop d3 was best, and I, I made the move queen f3, which is winning. Now, keep in mind what what I'm keeping in mind here when I'm playing this move queen f3 is I'm keeping in mind I'm trying to make this tactical idea of queen h8, of rook h8 work, basically. So I want to make this threat with tempo. Like, I want to play queen f3, which threatens to win a piece, but also threatens to get my queen to the h-file. By threatening to get my queen to the h-file, I'm making this idea of, of sacrificing my rook with rook h8 work, because the whole point is, if I could play rook h8 right now, and my queen was on f3, uh, it would be winning. So... I mean, you'll see what happened in the game, actually. I played queen f3, and then bishop takes e4, and now rook h8 is mate in 5. It's rook h8, and the whole point is, is if they take back with the bishop, we're going to play queen to h3, and that actually threatens mate. And, and more importantly, if now the rook moves away, we have queen h7 to f7, which is mate. And if the bishop moves back to g7 to block that, then of course queen h7 is mate in 1. So the game concluded with, you know, one of the many checkmates that was possible, and I won the game. So what's curious is, why does the computer think that queen f3 is a mistake. Well, this is something that happens when you analyze with computers, is you can't always 100% take everything they say seriously, especially if you're just using the, you know, analyze my game function or whatever. Uh, th there's a set depth setting on your, on your computers, and they're not going to see everything if they're not analyzing to, like, an infinite depth. So, like, if I throw this computer on now, uh, as you can see, like, if I go back one move, now the computer, given an infinite depth and a long time to look at it, thinks that queen f3 is by far and away the best move. And it's saying that this is plus 7.8. So one of the issues the computer was running into is it thought, okay, after queen f3, rook fb8, that maybe black was going to be okay. And it didn't see right away that queen b3 was going to be a winning attack, threatening f7, e6, and then bishop takes g6. Now for me, it's not so much that I saw all this, it's just that I understood that with the threat of rook h8 on the table after queen f3, that I should have a winning attack. And this was part of my preparation, it was part of my experience, I've played these types of positions before. So I had this intuitional feeling that, that queen f3 should be game over. I've played these types of moves in the past, and I just understood that this position should be decisive advantage white, and I should have some sort of decisive attack. Um, but, but of course this position is, is completely winning, but it took the computer a while to see that, and that's why in the initial assessment it was favoring this move bishop to d3, 
But if I put this one here now, you can see that it gives considerably lower assessment than it gives for what I actually played. Uh, bo both moves should still be a winning advantage for white, but this is a significantly lower assessment. So this is something that just you shouldn't get into the habit of just going over your games and just taking everything the computer says as absolute okay, it said this move is bad, so it says it's a mistake, so it must be a mistake. In this case, I played this game perfectly. Like, I didn't really make any mistakes. So you have to go over your games with kind of a fine-tooth comb, go over it, let the infinite analysis run, take a look at your moves, and really ask those questions. If the computer says it's a mistake, you know, click on the move, don't just look at what the computer says, run the analysis tab, try to figure out why is this move bad, because every once in a while it might surprise you, and you might find out, you know what, that move actually, it was really good, and uh, it was the right idea all along, and it was really the path that I needed to go down uh, to get uh, the best possible advantage and the biggest possible advantage. And more important than finding the right move is understanding what's going on in the position and understanding how to find the best move. That's much more important. Just being able to see this theme of rook to h8 check as a checkmating idea is more important than just finding the absolute best move according to the engine. Because we're not trying to play perfect engine moves according to the engine. We're trying to replicate that process in ourselves and play the best moves um, on the chessboard using our very human process of analyzing positions and assessing and understanding ideas and understanding plans so that we can duplicate what the engine is doing and sometimes even improve on it if we're lucky. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.